Have you ever wondered who controls your running speed? Is it your legs, your lungs, or some invisible puppet master pulling your strings? Picture this. A novice runner thinks to himself, if I just flap my legs faster like a penguin trying to fly, I'll break my personal record in no time. Well, let's just say, that didn't end well, unless you count falling flat on your face as a win. Then there was this other runner, a bit more seasoned, but still had a lot to learn. She thought, I bet if I just huff and puff more like I'm trying to blow down the big bad wolf's house, I'll surely run faster. Needless to say, the only thing she blew down was her own stamina. It seems almost intuitive to believe that our legs, those powerful pistons, or our lungs, the mighty bellows, are the sole captain steering the ship of our running speed. But what if I told you that's not the entire picture? Take a moment and consider this. The fastest man alive, Usain Bolt, doesn't have legs that are twice as long as yours, nor does he have lungs that could inflate a hot air balloon in a single breath. Yet he runs like the wind, so what's his secret? Well, you might be surprised to learn that the true puppet master isn't something as tangible as our legs or lungs, it's not even something you can see in the mirror. This puppet master is hidden, working behind the scenes, tirelessly coordinating every stride, every breath, every beat of your heart. It's like the director of a grand orchestra ensuring every instrument plays in harmony to produce a beautiful symphony. But what if I told you that the true mastermind behind your running speed is something you might not expect? Ready for the plot twist? The real puppet master, the unsung hero of your running speed is none other than your brain. Yes, you heard it right. Your brain is the one pulling the strings, managing your speed like a maestro conducting a symphony of muscle contractions and energy allocation. Imagine your brain as a frugal accountant, sitting behind a giant desk, surrounded by stacks of energy reserves. Each time you take a step, it's like writing a check. The accountant, ever so careful, is constantly calculating, is this pace sustainable? Do we have enough resources to keep this up? Like a thrifty miser, the brain rations out your energy to ensure you don't go bankrupt before the finish line. Now let's add another hat to our brain's collection. Picture it as a drill sergeant, barking orders at a platoon of muscles. Each stride, each leap, each breath, all coordinated by the brain's precise commands. It's like a rigorously choreographed dance routine with the brain ensuring every muscle knows its part and performs it at the right time. But it's not all about strict regulation and rationing. The brain also has a dash of the romantic poet in it. It's attuned to the beauty and rhythm of your run, the symphony of your footfalls, the whisper of the wind against your skin. It takes these sensory inputs and makes tiny adjustments to your stride, your rhythm, your speed. It's a delicate balancing act, a dance of precision and passion. And what about those moments when you feel like you can't go on, when your legs feel like lead and your lungs are on fire? That's your brain too, sending signals of fatigue in an attempt to protect you from harm. It's like a caring parent, always looking out for you, even when you're pushing your limits. So next time you struggle to pick up the pace, Remember, it's not your legs protesting, it's your brain doing the accounting. Uh, now that we know the brain is the boss, how do we get it to work in our favor? Well my friends, that's where the fun begins. It's all about mental exercises and visualization techniques. Imagine this, you're out on your morning run, feeling the rhythm of your feet hitting the pavement. But instead of just focusing on the physical, let's involve your brain. Picture yourself being chased by a bear. Yes, you heard it right, a bear perhaps a grisly one. Now I'm not suggesting you go out and find a bear to chase you, that's a story for another day. But it's about using your imagination to bring a sense of urgency and speed to your run. Your brain, the wonderful organ that it is, will kick into high gear, telling your body to move faster because, well, there's a bear. But let's not stop there. Visualization isn't just about creating imaginary threats. It's also about seeing yourself as more than just a runner. Visualize yourself as a speeding bullet, a cheetah sprinting across the savanna, or even an Olympic athlete breaking the finish line tape. These images can help your brain understand what you want from it, speed. Mental exercises can also include setting specific goals and challenging your brain to meet them. For instance, you could tell your brain, today, we're going to run this mile 20 seconds faster, and then you visualize achieving that goal. You see yourself sprinting, your breath steady, your legs pumping like well-oiled pistons, Remember, it's not always about the physical training. Your brain is a powerful tool, capable of pushing your body to new limits. Train it well, and it will serve you well. And of course, always remember to take a moment after your run to appreciate your brain for its hard work. 
A little mental pat on the back can go a long way in maintaining motivation and enthusiasm for your next run. So there you have it, your brain is not just along for the ride, it's driving the car, and with the right training it can take you to some pretty impressive speeds. And remember it's all in your head. Literally. But does this mind over matter thing really work for running speed? Well, let's dive into the realm of science to unravel this mystery. Scientists have been scratching their heads for years trying to understand why runners, despite being on the brink of collapse, suddenly find a burst of energy when they see the finish line. Picture this, a scientist in a lab coat, his hair standing on end, as he observes a runner on a treadmill. The runner is panting, sweating, ready to keel over, but the moment the scientist mentions the words finish line, the runner's eyes light up, their feet start moving faster, almost as if they've tapped into a hidden reservoir of energy. It's like their brain sent a message. Hey, we're almost there, let's kick it up a notch. This phenomenon isn't just anecdotal. Research from the University of Kent in England supports the brain's role in managing running speed. They conducted a study where runners were asked to rate their perceived exertion on a scale from 1 to 10 while running at different speeds. They found that the runner's perceived exertion was directly related to their running speed, not their heart rate or oxygen consumption. In other words, it was their brain that dictated how hard they felt they were working, not their body. In another study, researchers at the University of Cape Town in South Africa found that runners could still sprint at the end of a race, despite reaching their supposed maximum capacity. They concluded that this end spurt was not due to an increase in energy reserves, but rather a result of the brain's decision to allow the body to access its remaining energy. So it seems that the brain plays a crucial role in managing our running speed. It's not just about physical stamina or strength, it's about mental endurance and determination. It's about the power of the mind over matter, the brain's ability to push the body beyond its perceived limits. So, the next time you see that finish line, remember your brain is cheering you on, saying, you can do it. So who's really in charge of your running speed? It's not your legs, it's not your lungs, it's your brain. Let's imagine a comical scenario where your brain, legs, and lungs are sat around a table, each vying for the title of Speedmaster. Your legs, muscular and strong, might say, hey, we're the ones pounding the pavement, surely we're the boss. Not to be outdone, your lungs, vital and powerful, would argue, without us constantly supplying oxygen, none of you could do a thing. But then, in walks the brain, cool and composed. It lays down the law. Listen up, I'm the one who sets the pace, controls the rhythm, and decides when to push harder or pull back. So, I think it's clear who's really running the show here. That's right. As we've learned today, your brain is the unsung hero in your running journey. It's the puppet master, pulling all the strings, making sure your legs and lungs work in harmony to achieve the speed you desire. But remember, even puppet masters need training to perfect their craft, so, don't forget to train your brain as much as you train your body. We've unpacked a lot of information today from the mystery of running speed to the power of mind over matter. And it all boils down to this. Your brain is the boss of your running speed. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? It just goes to show that running isn't just a physical endeavor, it's a mental one too. And with that, we've reached the finish line of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as much as I have and that you've found it enlightening. But our exploration doesn't end here. If you're as intrigued as I am about the intersection of the brain and running, then stick around. Remember, your brain is the boss of your running speed. So train it well, respect it, and it will take you places. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Running Secrets Unveiled. Keep running, friends.